click the bell icon to get latest videos from Equida. Hello friends, previously we had seen the analysis of fins and the three cases. Now let us consider the third case that is the analysis of short fins in this case. Now in the third case, we have considered the fin is having some infinite length and so it is a short fin and in this case what we are going to consider that at x equal to l whatever heat that is conducted is entirely getting convected. Now previously we had seen in the first case that my fin was infinitely long so at x equal to infinity the temperature was as good as the temperature of ambient air or the fluid so we wrote at x equal to l t equal to t infinity in the second case we had considered that my tip was insulated so i consider that the dt by dx at x equal to l is zero now in this case obviously my first boundary condition will remain same only the second boundary condition will change. Now before this let me write, write down the differential equation that we are working on. It is d square theta upon dx square minus m square theta is equal to 0. Now previously we have seen that this is that differential equation we are trying to work on. The solution of this differential equation we got was theta is equal to c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to minus mx. Now this was the solution that we had got. We must find out the value of c1 and c2 using boundary condition. Now in the third boundary condition, in the third case, the first boundary condition will remain as it is. That is at x equal to 0, that is over here the value of t is same as t infinity t0 since the value of t is same as t0 i can write the value of theta as theta0 itself we have previously defined theta as t minus t infinity now as at x equal to 0 t is same as t0 so theta must be same as theta0 where theta0 can be written as t0 minus t infinity so since the first boundary condition is common, what we can write down? If I put this boundary condition in this equation, obviously I will get theta 0 as c1 plus c2. So this we have done previously in the previous cases. Now let us go for the second case. The second boundary condition here is at x equal to L what we can write down that whatever heat that is conducted is entirely getting convected so i can write that q dash of conduction is same as q dash of convection now this is my boundary condition if i want to express the same boundary condition mathematically i can write this as minus k a dt by dx at x equal to l is same as h a t minus t infinity at x equal to l. Now instead of writing the value in terms of t, let us write it in terms of theta. So that will be minus k a d theta by dx at x equal to l it is same as h a theta at x equal to l now this is my second boundary condition now let us substitute various numbers of theta and theta zeros in this equation and let's see what we are getting so we know that theta is c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to minus mx so d theta by dx can be written as c1 
e raised to m x minus c to m e raised to minus m x. So let us substitute the value of d theta by d x in the previous equation and let us see what we are getting. So we will be writing this as minus k a. Now d theta by dx they have written at x equal to l. So I can write this as c1 m e raised to ml minus c2 m e raised to minus ml. Now this is equal to h a and theta. The value of theta is same here that is c1. Even they are writing, they are trying to write this value at x equal to L. So I can write this as C1 e raised to ML plus C2 e raised to minus ML. So now what we have to do is basically a simplification. So let us take the value of K to the other side and see what we are getting. C1 M e raised to ml minus c2 m e raised to minus ml is equal to h a upon here h a upon k in the bracket c1 e raised to ml plus c2 e raised to minus ml. So again if I rearrange the term and if I keep on solving this I will get the value of C1 as theta 0 1 plus h upon mk divided by e raised to ml plus e raised to minus ml plus h upon mk e raised to ml minus e raised to minus ml. Now this is quite a large expression that we are getting. Now it requires some time and some dedication to solve this and get the value of C1. Similarly, we can get the value of C2 as theta 0 minus C1 and we can further solve it. Finally, instead of writing the value of C1 and C2, let us substitute the value of C1 and C2 in the main equation and see what we are getting. So simply the main equation looks something like this. So this is the temperature distribution that we got at the end of this exercise. Now again if I use the Fourier's law Q dash is equal to minus K d theta by dx at x equal to 0 and again if I follow the same exercise that we had done for case 1 and case 2. I will get the expression of Q dash as root of H P K A theta 0 in the bracket tan hyperbolic ML plus H upon M K divided by 1 plus H upon M K into tan hyperbolic ML. Now we can summarize that in the first case the value of temperature distribution that we got was theta by theta 0 is equal to e raised to minus mx and the value of heat transfer rate was q dash was equal to root of hpka into theta 0. Now here we are trying to summarize the temperature distribution and the heat transfer rate that we got in all the three cases. In the second case the value of theta by theta 0 that we got was it was the mix of exponential terms. So we try to express that in the hyperbolic manner. 
and the expression was something like this cos of hyperbolic so this was the temperature distribution in that case and the value of q dash that we got was root of h p k a theta 0 into tan hyperbolic ml and in the third case the value of theta by theta 0 we got was it's a long value that we had written previously cos hyperbolic h upon mk so this was my temperature distribution in the third case similarly the value of q dash was root of h p k a theta 0 tan hyperbolic ml plus h upon 1 plus h upon m k tan hyperbolic m l. <coughs> so here we are trying to summarize the temperature distribution and the heat transfer rate that we got at the end of each case. Similarly with the temperature distribution that we got in the third case we can draw this kind of a temperature profile and at the end we can say that the heat transfer by conduction is same as the heat transfer by convection so there is a small drop there due to convection in the temperature now this is it in this topic thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ekeda and subscribe to ekeda thank you